Hi, my name is John and I'm here to demonstrate how to use the ZTS MBT-1 Pulse Load Multi-Battery Tester. Uh, this tester is a full-size tester. As you can tell, it's sitting in my hand. It is quite a large unit, but it's very versatile. Uh, it can test 10 different battery types. And they make a mini version of this, which obviously is much smaller. Uh, it costs less too, but it can only test four different types of batteries. Uh, right now I will demonstrate how to use this unit. As I mentioned, this version is larger and costs more than the mini version, <clears throat> but this is indicative of its functionality as it tests many more types of batteries than the mini version. Probably the biggest feature that attracts most people, aside from the numerous batteries it can test, is the ability to put a load on the battery being tested. The pulse load technology simulates real power demand such as the drain put on the battery, say from a camera's flash, and it measures that and then measures its battery's performance. This gives a much more accurate determination of the battery's condition. Many other battery testers on the market don't do this. So although you get an indication of the battery's life, it's not as accurate as putting a load on the cell. <clears throat> For many years, I used a tester that did not put a load on the cell, and even though it indicated that the cell was still good, it wouldn't run in a device such as a remote control. And again, that's because my tester does not, didn't place a load on the cell like the device would, and so it didn't give a real-world performance indication. In fact, that's exactly why I purchased this tester. Also, you need a good tester to match batteries. Sometimes you have two batteries, let's say for a remote control, and the unit stops working. You test the batteries on a conventional tester and they both say good, but the device won't work. Then what? Other testers only give you a meter reading with a needle that points to good, questionable, or bad, or a green or red light only to indicate how much power is left. Now, those readouts are just too general, and as I mentioned, you can have a cell read good, but it really isn't because the other types of testers do not put a load on the cell. So you throw the batteries out or you recharge them. <clears throat> but it's possible that one battery of the two did have enough power. That's where battery matching comes in. The ZTS will give you a better readout indicating which batteries are close to each other in power. So instead of using a pair of batteries in a device where one is at 80% and the other is at 40%, you can match the power of the two batteries much more accurately. Now to test a battery, you have a probe that's housed on the side here that pulls out. It's attached permanently so you don't lose it. And as you can see, there's ten different designation spots for the batteries, such as this spot would be where you would test the 1.2 volt rechargeable type batteries, AA, AAA, C, and D. To test alkaline AA, AAA, C, and D, and N, you would do it down in this area here. This section would be for testing the different type of button cells. The button cells are what are in watches and hearing aids, things of that uh, nature. Down here you would test the 9 volt alkaline batteries and then the other type of batteries here. Now again, uh, it has, this has an, uh, uh, an LCD readout up at the top and the readouts go from 10% all the way to 100% capacity and it shows you on the graph here that they light up in red, yellow, and green. Now for this demonstration the camera and the, the, the lights here may not pick up the red color but it is a nice bright red color, yellow, and then green designation. So from 10 to 20 percent the area, if the, if the battery has 10 to 20 percent power this will light up as red, <clears throat> 40 to 60 percent will light up as yellow, and 80 to 100 percent will light up as green. And I'll demonstrate this in a minute. To operate the unit, you need to install the four AA batteries in the back of the unit. And the manufacturer claims that the unit should operate for about two years with the installed AA's. And, that, and, and a nice feature of this model is that it will give you a low battery warning if the unit's batteries get too low to operate properly. So to use it, you remove the probe uh, from the housing on the side of the tester. And in this case, I'm going to test a AA rechargeable battery here. And it's important to note that you take the positive end and put it down on the contact point. You touch the negative end with the probe and you'll see the LCD performing its readout and it designated that it was 100% power. And I'll show you that again. And there's 100% power. If I take a AA alkaline battery 
that goes down here. You place the positive end down, touch the negative end. It takes a couple seconds to read out. In this case, it's telling me it has 40% power. Here I'm using a 9 volt alkaline battery. You don't need the probe to test this. You match up the proper terminals here and it starts to perform its readout and it tells me that this is at 40 percent power also. Now this type of battery is a 123 style battery. Uh, I use these for my flashlights and down here you'll notice two terminal points. That's where you test this particular battery. In this case uh, you can't read it but it says CR123. But the reason it has a positive and a negative terminal point like the alkaline 9 volt is because CRV3 batteries have two contact terminals like an alkaline battery so that you would test it at this particular point. For this test here, you just take the positive end, touch it to the positive section, touch the negative end with the probe, and here it tells me I'm at 60% power with this particular battery. <clears throat> Now, an important point to mention is to make sure you place the battery in the proper terminal at the contact point. Uh, in other words, if you recall, this alkaline battery went at this section and it designated a 40% uh, power charge. If I put the alkaline battery where the rechargeables go, I will get a reading of, in this case, 10%. It's given me an improper reading because I don't have it in the proper spot. So it's important to note to make sure that you take the proper battery and line it up where it is actually supposed to go to get a proper designation. Now, please keep in mind also that this unit does not test 9 volt rechargeables. ZTS makes an exact unit like this and it will test 9 volt rechargeables if that's what you need. But this unit will only test 9 volt alkalines. Now you can see how easy this unit is to use. And again, as I previously mentioned, the full size MBT tests 10 different battery types, whereas the mini version is smaller, costs about 60% less, but only tests four different types, such as the AA, AAA alkaline and rechargeable, 3 volt lithium and 9 volt alkaline. These are the most uh, common battery types. So the mini version might be a good choice if that's the only type of batteries you have. But whatever model you choose, the MBTs are highly suggested because of their quality and the pulse load technology that it has. Now just a note on the manual supplied with the tester, obviously it shows how to use the tester. But it also gives good general information on battery capacity, self-discharge, and battery life. So there you have it, the ZTS MBT-1 battery tester, an excellent, excellent product. Uh, whether it's the mini version or the full size, you can't go wrong.